Hi, I'm Nick at SciView, and this is Cooking with SciView Episode 1. If you don't know what SciView is, or you don't know what SciView Utils is, come to the site. It's SciViewApps.com. What we're going to do here, though, is dive way, way down and show one little awesome thing in SciView Utils. This is the SciView Report Builder. On the one hand, this is a very powerful, user-friendly interface that you can use to create your reports in Splunk, and it comes with SciView Utils 2.0. On the other hand, this interface was built using the modules and the techniques that are packaged inside UUtils, so this is also a really far out example to show Splunk app developers how much power there really is in here. Like any dashboard or any view built with side view utils, it'll have a mixture of core Splunk modules along with side view modules. So here's a familiar search bar module. Here is a Splunk time range picker module. Here we have a side view button, pull down, a number of hidden modules in here from side view utils that make this functionality all fit together. Back in up a second, here we've typed in source type equals access combined, which means we're searching all our access log data. In this case, it's just Apache logs. But this is Splunk, so picture any machine data here you want. This could be a custom application log, could be network data from a deep packet inspection system. This could be sensor data from a distributed control system in a chemical plant or something. So again, this demo is going to be showing boring old web server logs. Let's stretch your imagination and picture your own data here. These pull-down modules in particular, you can see these are configured to be reporting options. So that no matter what we put up here, it's going to give us those fields as split bys, as distinct counts of, et cetera, et cetera. So right now it's showing the, the count of events over time split by status. But we can do any simple report using these pull-downs. So let's start out simple. We'll do a bar chart of distinct client IPs, distinct count of client IPs. And instead of doing over time, let's do over status. over status. Splunk doesn't like to do over status by status because it makes no sense. So it tells us, hey, don't do that. And let's just run this over the last seven days. And what else? Let's make this a bar chart. Okay, at this point, you're saying, you know, it's a little more user friendly. It's familiar, but it compresses the Splunk report building workflow into a single page, which is cool. It's at the same time, it's kind of a power user interface, but it's also user friendly. I see familiar things here. You're thinking it's familiar, but cooler. Now let's push this thing in a couple ways. Let's, let's try and break it. First, let's click on something in Splunk's general reporting interfaces. Whenever you click a chart or a table, you always get taken to the raw events. Sometimes that's great. You're looking at log files. But whether you want to see log files or not, you usually don't want to stop reporting at that first click. And in the side view report builder, you don't have to. Let's take a simple example with our boring old access data. Let's say we're looking at status 206. Well, 206 is partial content. It's a bit of a strange header. Let's click that and see what happens. Instead of looking at raw events, we see the events over time, but then we're in the same interface. So let's drill deeper. Let's keep on going. What files did we have status 206 on? Let's just change the report to run over file. Okay, that's interesting. Let's expand it back out. Did, did we have these a lot? Let's look in the last 30 days. What files? Do, okay. Let's switch and just look at the raw table. Let's, okay. Font files. I guess the browser does something strange where it sends headers to the server and the header gives back partial content and kind of chunks up the fonts. Okay. Now, next. Let's try using our browser's back button. In Core Splunk, as a 4.3, there's some back button support, which is cool. But that doesn't work in complex form search pages like this. So even in 4.3, you're always having to painstakingly recreate your reporting criteria when you're in a complex thing like this. Or you're always being really careful to launch your drill downs in new windows so you can leave the old report window there untouched. Well, let's just, let's just hit back, back button. So what was the last thing we did? Okay, we changed the time range. We changed, we were looking at file, then we back to looking at one more time and three back buttons does it and we're back to our report. It'll rerun it for us, but we are indeed back with those same values entered. Cool. The forward button would work too, but I won't show you that. Now, what if we do want to leave this page? I just showed you that you're, you know, you can keep on driving. You're, you stay in the driver's seat of this reporting interface, but what if you do want to leave? Well, you can. You can take any of these reports. You can save it as a search. You can create a dashboard panel. It's just like in the normal report builder, except all sort of from this one interface. You can also click see full search syntax. This will take you to the side view chart view. Instead of the nice reporting pull downs you see here, 
you'll see just the Splunk search syntax and all its glory. So let's click that. So we see here all those reporting pull downs we're doing this for us. Chart, DC, client, IP, over status, pipe, sort by DC. Ah, that's, that's kind of a lot to remember. Maybe you know this syntax like the back of your hand, but you, let's see, you probably don't. Again, the back button will take us back. Next up, there's no distinction between events and results. If you haven't used the Core Splunk Report Builder a lot, you might not know what I mean, but that's okay. It's a cool demo anyway. So it's going to be a deep dive. Are you ready? Let's t add a lookup to our base search. Let's extract geolocation fields. Load our pull down loading. Okay, check it out. The, the geolocation fields just appear in here automatically, even though they weren't in the original events. Let's run a report of traffic over time split by client country. Counter events. Let's do over time split by client country. Oh, we don't want a bar chart anymore. Call the chart. Okay. So we report over client country. And we'll split it by client city. Again, it doesn't like doing over and by. So it gives us a little nice error message to help us out. So over country, split by city. Yeah, we want to go back to a bar chart. Cool. Now let's get crazier. Let's take these raw events and roll them up into sessions. Let's ask the transaction command to identify unique transactions and tell it to also keep an eye on client IP and user agent to roll things up right. Let's go through that again. We're going to take our raw events, in this case our access events, Tell the transaction command, hey, I want you to, to make sessions using client IPs and user agents. I could put in max span and max pause arguments here to make this a little, you know, really fine tune what the criteria are. But let's keep it simple. And let's run this just in the last 24 hours. Okay, so now our rows, our count of rows here, the, well, our events are really sessions here because that's, that's what we have coming out of this pipe. So now our units here, these are real, real individual user sessions which is cool. 50 user sessions from Beijing inside China. Now let's say we want to analyze the first referrer. We want to do a little sort of marketing analysis. Where are all these sessions coming in from? Is this mostly search engine traffic or is it most of it just the links we have on other sites? To do that, we'll break out the eval command, which you use for all kinds of minor surgery like this. Each session will have preserved all the different referrer fields as a big multi-value field. Of course, you can see the referrer is just listed in here. But it'll have every single possible value of refer and referrer domain. So we just want the first ones. So let's just slice off the very first one. So that's the first refer that the user came in on. Okay, now we have a field called first refer. Again, you'll see it appears in the pull downs just fine, even though it wasn't there in the original event. So let's run a report over first refer and we'll split it by client country over the last 24 hours. Cool. So these are our refers. And uh, again, the units here are user sessions. This is getting to be, uh, I mean, we're pretty deep in here. So let's now say I want to look at just the traffic from all the Splunk.com sites. This is Splunk, so we're not, we're not stuck in some canned dashboard. We can just keep on driving, keep on going. And let's take it back and look over the last seven days. All righty. We see it's mostly Splunk-based traffic, and it's mostly from the U.S. United Kingdom, Taiwan, Slovenia, Singapore, uh, other. Here's this pesky other field. I say pesky, and if you've seen it before, you know that when you see other in the course Blunk interfaces, clicking on it, as you probably know, gives you an error message or it does the wrong thing. Let's really break this thing. Let's click other. Click. Okay. Now the side view report builder figured that out too. It left in our wildcard search, but it said what well, you were really interested in is just the Splunk base refer. Okay. Again, this was that created field that we had. And you were not interested in all of the client countries that we were showing before. So it, it knew to nod all those out. Now we're left looking at, well, just a flat time chart of those other events. Well, what were they? What were the countries? Let's run this over client country. I see. It was Australia, it was Chile, it was France. Cool. 
So I hope you get the idea. No matter what report you run, you can drill in on it, run another report, keep going. Here's the back button to go back. Uh, create fields, do lookups, do surgery, do all kinds of crazy pivoting up here and still have the power of a nice simple report interface um, run by the pull downs below. So I hope you enjoyed Cooking with SciView episode one. This is a very deep dive into a very advanced interface. But whether you're an end user interested in a better reporting interface or whether you're a Splunk app developer or a dashboard developer, I hope you saw a lot of things here you liked. So check SciView Utils 2.0 out today and check back for more screencasts. Our site again is SciViewApps.com. Check out SciViewUtils. Thanks again. Thanks for watching.